Hello, this is a video on using interrupts in the MSP430 microcontroller by Texas Instruments. Uh, we will be going through three programs that use interrupts to perform certain functionality. So the first program uh, toggles LEDs using buttons such that pressing button 1 will toggle LED 1 and pressing button 2 will toggle LED 2. The second program will toggle alternate LEDs uh, in the sense that when we press button 1, the LED 1 is turned on and LED 2 is turned off. And when we press button 2, LED 2 is turned on and LED 1 is turned off. And the final program actually keeps track of the number of times a button has been pressed and this count is displayed on an LCD module in real time. So let's go through the first program. First, we set the input and output pins. Uh, we set the LED pins as output and we set the buttons as input. By default, I'm setting LED 1 to low and LED 2 to high, just to make sure that the code is running. And both the buttons are set up as input buttons and then the output is default high. Both of them are connected to pull up resistors. Then we configure interrupts. So P2IE, this enables the interrupt for this particular port. And by toggling the bit three, we particularly enable interrupt for only button one. We do the same for button two. And P2IES, this triggers the edge select. By flipping this bit to one, we enable edge select and set it from high to low meaning whenever the voltage drops from high to low, only then will the interrupt flag activate. And initially we set both the interrupt flags to zero. And finally we enable the global interrupt using this. This code is run whenever an interrupt flag is found to be on. And this code simply toggles the LED if it finds that the interrupt flag for button one is turned on. It, and it toggles LED2 if the interrupt flag for button 2 is turned on. After toggling, it also resets the interrupt flag so that the code will not run again. Now we test the code. First we build it and then we debug it. When we play it, you can see that the second LED has turned on. This one. And then if we press the button, it turns off. If we press it again, it turns on. The same thing with the other LED. If we press the button, it turns off and turns on. So this button controls this LED and this button controls this LED. In the second program, we toggle alternate LEDs using buttons. Uh, so in the code, we initially set the input and output pins. Uh, the LED pins are set as output pins and the buttons are set as input pins. The resistors are set as pull up resistors. And the interrupts are configured in the same way that they're configured in the previous program. This time we change the function that is written in the interrupt. Here, instead of simply toggling the LED, what we do now is we set the LED 2 to low and LED 1 to high when button 1 is pressed. When button 2 is pressed, we set LED 1 to low and LED 2 to high. So this is the only change in the second program. Let's test this program. First we build it. Now we see that this LED is turned on. If we press the other LED, if we press the other button, then the red LED turns on. If we press the other button, this turns on. Note that if I press this again, nothing will happen. But then if I press button one again, this button, then LED turns on. In the third program, we use an LCD module along with the interrupts. So looking at the code, we first initialize to stop the watchdog timer and unlock the GPIO pins. After that, we run 
this function called initialize GPIO LCD. So this initializes the LCD module. Uh, looking at the function, we can see that it sets the appropriate pins as output pins and it switches the LCD into the 4-bit mode of communication which is used for data transfer and we then clear the display and then we enable the display uh, and finally we force the cursor to get to the beginning of uh, the DDRAM. So this is the LCD initialization which is run only once in this program and after that we set the variables count and old count to zero. So these variables are used to keep track of the number of times we press the button. Uh, and then we set the button pin which is the third bit of second port P2.3 as an input pin and we attach a pull up resistor to it. Then we configure the interrupt. Uh, we enable the interrupt for this button and we have a high to low edge select uh, for this button. And then we manually set the interrupt flag to zero and then we enable the global interrupt. So initially we write zero to the LCD to represent that uh, the button has been pressed zero times. And every time we press a button, it clears the display and it displays the count on the LCD. So how does the program know when we press the button. So that is where this interrupt comes in. Uh, the interrupt code, what it does is uh, whenever the button is pressed, the count variable is incremented and the interrupt flag is reset. So when this happens, this particular if block is activated, meaning whenever the count is incremented, the count va variable becomes greater than old count. Uh, and in this particular block, old count is equated to the count. After this, uh, we clear the display and we run this function which actually displays the count variable on the LCD. Let's run this code. First we build it and then we debug. we play it. Note that the count is initially set to 0 and now when you click the button it increments by 1. If you click it again it increments again and so on. Uh, the number of digits that must be displayed are automatically determined by the count so until now one digit has been displayed because a single digit number was enough to represent the information. Now we have two digits. And every time we click the button once, the count is incremented once. Note that if you press the button multiple times, it takes time for the number to be displayed on the LCD, but it still keeps track of the right number. So say if I press the button three times, it shows me 21. If I press the number four times, if I press the button four times, it gives me 25. So this is the benefit of using interrupts.